What is up? Uh, welcome to the unofficial Tedeschi Trucks podcast. This is episode number, what is it, 81? I am Adam Choi. Thank you uh, for joining me. Uh, if you want to follow this show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. Uh, and to follow on YouTube, it's uh, Tedeschi Trucks Podcast. It's pretty easy to find. I'm at Adam Choi on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow me, please subscribe to the show, however you're listening to it. Uh, this is a live stream, but I will be putting out audio versions, of course, as well. I'll try to do that tonight, maybe tomorrow, uh, because I actually am going to Atlanta to meet my father flying in from New York, and we're going to go to the TTB shows at the Fox Friday and Saturday night. Also renting a car and driving down to Macon to go to the uh, Big House Museum, which neither of us have been to, so that's going to be a lot of fun. But I want to get into today's episode fairly quickly because... Our guest, Joe Torriello, a hardcore TTB fan who was at tonight's show at uh, Art Park in Lewiston, New York, outside Buffalo, is on East Coast time. And it is getting uh, we're pushing towards midnight on the East Coast. So I really appreciate him joining me. He's been to 20 plus TTB shows. So without further ado, let's uh, recap tonight's show with uh, Joe Torriello. Hi, Adam. How are you? Oh, that was very smooth. Look at that. Hi, how are you? Boom, he's right there. I appreciate you taking the time, and I am doing very well. Thank you. I, I appreciate it again. Uh, how are you, first of all? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, it was it was an exciting evening, so you know you come off a high from those shows for sure. Why don't you tell me first how you got connected to uh, TTB? And your kind of uh, the summary of your history with the band, I guess. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I was aware of Susan and aware of Derek, but had not seen their collective band. And it come off a long period of just not finding music that I really loved when a kid. And it was kid years and music sort of got shoved to the side. So there was a concert down at the Buffalo Canal side, putting a bring your own chairs, general admission. Uh, I think it was 15 bucks. And this was in 2021. It was a beautiful June night. And my wife and I sat there. And at the end of it, we looked at each other and it was like, what did we just see? You know, it was, it was fantastic. And from that point, it's been a journey into the music, into the stuff that I had missed. Um, years that had gone by when they were separate performers. And we tried to, um, going forward, find a show or two every year and then started making vacations out of them, um, going to Nashville and going to New York City and into D.C. and Hershey and San Antonio and Austin. And we've, you know, we've traveled all over, done trips with it. No, we're going to have a great show, even if even if the trip doesn't go perfectly. Um, so that kind of got us started, and it's become, you know, a passion ever since. And obviously, we we watch all the Nug stuff, um, and whatever else they want to offer up as pay for you, we're good with, you know. Yeah. So you were you knew about Susan, you knew about Derek in the would you say early two thousands or even earlier than that? Did you, did you? Yeah, I'd say that's just about right. But I can't say that I I focused a ton on their music. Um, didn't focus a ton on anybody's music. Uh, yeah, life was, life got in the way. So yeah, 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 kinda. yeah it, and it, once my daughter graduated from um, from high school. Uh, it made it a lot easier for my wife and I to, we had more free time and more time to go do things. And I hadn't found music that really grabbed me like the music did when I was in my twenties, thirties and forties. So it was nice to find this group. And that night we first saw them it was a great introduction to them. Now they've had a lot of different, you know, performer changes since 2014 uh, a lot of the people that are there now weren't there when we watched them, but they were still tremendous. 
it was just it was tremendous um and that's how it began basically wait so you said you went to like you've been to like 20 plus ttb shows those were some in like you said 2014 and then some more recently when when or were or did you mean you could be just seeing a derek and susan in the past just, oh just seeing derek and susan well no uh, the the combined group uh ttb as it exists as an entity started for us in 2014 okay i got so that's when you came back into the fold so yes right around exactly that. gotcha I, I regret not seeing both derek and susan uh, derek's band to me the dtb was one of the, after seeing it after having missed it when it was going it's a big regret that i didn't see it live when i had to you know and i was uh, searching for other kinds of music because i think that was fantastic He's yeah that's fantastic. that's kind of like similar similar story story with me like re regretting not being hardcore into this music in dtb era and and susan solo era yes right. uh, yeah and i you know what most people can or probably ha most ttb hardcore ttb fans probably do have that same regret because these two have been playing music for so so long especially i mean especially derek but she's been singing forever too so it's yes. like there's going to be always someone who like heard of them heard their music heard them yes. sing heard him play guitar right. like before you because they've been around forever and that's kind of like the fun of this podcast is kind of like connecting with you know all these people who have or many of them who have this like a long history with with both derek I, and i'm susan. clearly a johnny come lately to this thing at 2014 I mean, there are tons of people that have a good decade more than I do with this. But I'm excited for having the opportunity to dig back and learn something, you know, and to experience their music after seeing what the merged group was like. It was nice to sort of break it apart and see what it was prior to that, too. And yeah, you I'm, have a unique I'm perspective. Impressed. Yeah, you have a you have a, a unique perspective, and I've talked to fans and people connected to the band in some way who've come back in or come in or discover them at like all different times, and like all what's there is like how, the passion and the love for the band and the music is not really something that's. I mean, I guess it, it means more if you have like certain deeper and <laughs> a whole history with them, but right. the, but you can see a lot of people who were newer to the band, like once they're hooked, they have that like very pet <laughs> you know yeah. very open passion for the yeah. band why don't we get into uh tonight's show and tell me sure. about like tell me about like the whole experience of going to the venue getting there would you see who'd you talk to would you eat would you drink what was the <laughs> vibe of the crowd yeah. like all this stuff where'd you sit so i'll kind of like yeah, the, tell the, the story of the evening art park is a little bit odd compared to some of the other venues they have an upfront pit so there's never going to be a concern about standing and sitting at at art park if you want to be in the pit you're up for the night um i'd love to be in there but my hip and back aren't going to take three and a half hours standing so we bought uh reserve seats which are behind the pit but sort of off to the left of the stage they don't ring it so that it's it goes the length of the stage it's only half of the stage which is a little weird and then there's bowl seating next to the reserve seating where you bring your chair and uh, just park out and camp and find a spot and then there's a huge hill behind it that's the you know basically from up there you're watching the boards but you can hear great from up there you just can't see great so we were in reserve seats we, we had had better seats, actually, when we saw them the 1st of July at in Canandaigua. And it's always nice to have really good seats to see them. But the sound quality was really good tonight. The vibe is a little different, too, because I don't think you get as many regular TTB people who are East Coast people. They're going to venture towards Buffalo. And there's so many that are situated in and near Massachusetts, New York, you know, in and along Pennsylvania, uh, that go to multiple shows at a time. But uh, Art Park is a, is a little bit off the beaten path, but it's lovely. It, it sits in a, above the Niagara Gorge, and it's literally minutes from Niagara Falls. Um, it's a pretty setting. It really is. 
and they had a good crowd there tonight. I don't think it was packed, but they had a very good crowd. Um, it's a little more laid back. It's an outdoor venue. It's not the Beacon. It's not the Warner. It's not Chicago Theater. You know, you're not getting 3,000 hardcore TTB fans. You're getting six or 7,000 people, you know, 1,000 to 1,200 of which might be really died in the wolf fans and other people who are out for a nice evening listening to music or are tangential fans you know what i mean um so it's a little different in that respect but still an outstanding show tonight it was great so you said there were six or seven thousand people there total i i would think maybe a wow. little less than that maybe it's five um that's a big that's a big crowd that's a big crowd that's a serious that's a big hill it's a really big hill behind you and i have no idea how many people they're sticking on that hill um i would say maybe five is a little bit high but not much i don't think it, it's a it's a good size venue i mean try to pull up a picture of it and share it can that be done let's see if i could i i, you, I might have to be on chrome i'm on firefox browser if you could um let's see if i i can do it. let's see if it if can you be want done to if you want to the Ticketmaster site they probably have a seating chart yeah um, or someplace like that they give you a general idea the is that it right there seat. is that yes. it right there yes only the hill would be to the left of that that's the Niagara River behind the, the venue. And you see where the sound booth is in the middle, Adam? Right. We were to the left of that. But to behind us, there's a huge hill that goes all the way up. And that's that, all, that's all, not even on screen. What that's you're not on screen, no. So there's it's even pe- more people. Yeah. Doing it best for the audio listeners. It's a very picturesque yeah. setting with a river no, behind the stage. It, it, it's pretty. Um and like I said, they do a lot of art-related things at Art Park besides concerts. So it gets other uses as well as just concerts. But the one thing I, I didn't like about tonight, I thought Gabe kind of got short stiffed tonight. Th- this venue is, I don't know if the town of Lewiston loves having the venue there. And so there's a hard out at 10 o'clock. I see. Um, which is really early for three bands. And what that meant was that Gabe's set to, started at 5.30, but they didn't let people into the venue until 5. And you're going with 5,000 people through two sets of gates, and they have to get wanded and everything else. If you were, we got there really early. We probably got there about, I don't know, 3.30, quarter to 4.00 and started to get in line but if you were at the end of that line you missed the first set yeah they were that's that stinks they were no, you couldn't you could only get come in late and you had to leave as soon as possible when the show is exactly was exactly they they ended about 10 minutes before 10. i thought we might actually get two encores tonight instead of one because they had a little bit of time left but it might be one of those they shut off the microphone at 10 yeah, and you don't want to be in the middle of something and play it you know sort of halfway instead of going for it. Yeah. Is there a lot of residences in the area? Is that, that a lot of people live yeah. around there? Yes. See what it is? Yeah. It, it really sits in a small village. I don't know how close there are in terms of residential streets behind the venue. I know when you go into the venue, you definitely are going up a street, you know, a, 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 a residential street. And I think there's probably multiple residential streets impacted, but you know, it does good things for their merchants and restaurants, bars, and so on. But when you have a show that starts at 530, there aren't many people eating dinner at three o'clock. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're cutting off some of the stuff that you would benefit from. You got to put up with the traffic anyway. You might just as well let people enjoy your town and spend money in it. You know what I mean? But that's the only kind of downer with it was I thought Gabe, Really, there was like friends and family for Gabe. There just weren't a lot of people in the venue yet, uh, which was too bad because he put on another good show. He always puts on a good show. Yeah. So that that's the only thing I don't like about Art Park. I and it, it. it's not the friendliest vibe either from officials that are there. And like they're a lot of their 
volunteer they have volunteers that work as ushers and they kind of don't know the setup i mean the setup for this show in particular is probably very strange because they sold tickets two years ago i bought my tickets two and a half years ago and so they didn't really they weren't really tuned into what was going on uh and and that makes it more difficult when you have people that are showing up in the wrong place and other people are trying to watch and that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you being honest about about this stuff with me, and, and and especially since it's not a direct criticism of the band or anything no, like no, no, that. Not, but it makes me, but it makes it does make me wonder if if uh, I believe you with, with everything you're telling me, uh, and I wonder if the band had you know because it's not always easy on the road. And even when I talked to Bobby Tees, he was saying you know things should be more challenging when things are not as organized on the end of the right. the venue side of things. And you sometimes get people who are really on top of the ball and in and, and different cities and venues and other people kind of are not as reliable or on top of things. So I wonder if the band had any of that experience. I'm sure the show sounded uh, I, It amazing. sounded great. And, yeah. and I doubt it because Sue at the end of the show mentioned how much they enjoy coming to Art Park. They always seem to give themselves a day off before they have a show at Art Park. And um, I think they get treated pretty well there, and they have a relationship with Art Park. They've been coming here for quite a while. So I don't think that's going to change. It fits really nicely into their schedule as they do upstate New York and SPAC and Canandaigua and, you know, into New England. And then you can come back through Art Park on your way to the Midwest. I think they're headed to Cincinnati next. And it's not as far from Buffalo to Cincinnati as it is from Albany or, you know, Vermont or, or New Hampshire. It's totally worth everyone's while to make it happen there because they, they, you know, they can crunch the numbers and draw enough people to make some, yeah. make a, you know, a few bucks there. And then the for the fans between hardcore TTB fans and just people who want to go to a show in this, you know, in this pretty uh, backdrop, right. looking for some music. Like they're able well, they, to draw enough enough people and the summer they thing. Have season and, ticket holders there. I mean, there, there are season ticket holders at Art Park for the for the concert series. So maybe the band they want to see is a, a month from now, but they're going to go because they have season tickets. You know what I mean? Right. And that that takes some of the intensity of the crowd out from what you would get at the Beacon and the Warner and. The, the classic venues where their fans just sort of flock. Yeah, I got you. Let's uh, let's I guess get into uh, into the uh, the set list. What do you what, what do you what do you think? Sure. Uh, I did want to mention that we had a couple of um, sit-ins with TTB members playing with Los Lobos. Yeah, tell me about the tell me about the the, the openers and, and yeah, touched on um, Gabe a little bit. Yeah, Sue. So, um, uh, well. Gabe's set was, you know, a half an hour, and I think Gabe is terrific. I mean, he's a great singer and he's a great player. He's worth seeing. If you're going to the Wheels of Soul tour, you should go see Gabe for sure. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary except, as I mentioned, he got the short stick in terms of how many people would actually come to watch him if they had opened up at an appropriate time, really. But... With Los Lobos, when they opened up, they, they did about three quarters of their set, and then Sue came out and sang on a song, a song called Someday, uh, kind of a gospel -y feeling tune. She was great. Um, and that started a run of some TTP people with Los Lobos. Uh, Derek and Gabe were on uh, uh, Wondering No Longer. They did an Almond Brothers tune. Uh, that was really good. Derek, I think, has played enough of uh, Wondering No Longer to probably be able to do it in the sleep from all his Almond Brothers days. But he's really good at it. Gabe was really good. And then Derek uh, played on Bertha. They ended with Bertha. Uh, and he and Cesar, the um, guitar player for Los Lobos, were playing off each other for a good chunk of that song. And it was tremendous. If people can get an audio that includes that, I would look for it because it was really good. It was really good. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking as you're describing all this. I'm like, oh, I should dig into 
all the stuff that's you know i'm so eager to f- to find any live music or the nut yeah. stream or talk to people who've just been to t- the ttv shows on this run playing i am the moon stuff but there's been some real gems of course the you know gabe and los lobos are, are great but like obviously i'm always looking for the uh the stuff uh with uh t- yeah. derek and or susan or ttv yeah. members especially to to check so, out so the you audio got them on three of the last songs that los lobos did they were great on those songs and los lobos puts on a really good show too they're really talented it's a very talented group um uh, well worth the time to see the whole show uh, i can't encourage people more to, to go for all of it it's really good music you know what you're getting with ttb but if you're not familiar as much with gabe or los lobos it's a, it's a good show uh, yeah, I'm excited because I think I think those are the acts I'm continuing yeah. on the Wheels of Soul yeah. tour when I go see them uh, this so. summer. Yeah, if you're going to Atlanta, I'm pretty sure it's Wheels yeah, this of Soul. week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you should have a blast. Oh, uh, I will. Yeah, and so tonight, um, I was curious as to how they were going to play out the new albums, and they mixed the songs in instead of segregating it out in a block you got songs sort of scattered throughout the set list and they played the entirety of um, Crescent and had um, uh, Lottie Da uh, from Ascension. Uh, And that was the only thing, yeah, that was the only song from Ascension that I remember was Lottie Da. But they, they played out these songs differently than they did when I was at C-Mac and saw some of it. There's a lot of Derek tonight and a lot of extra uh, soloing, uh, which is fine with me. Um, and so they took on a different tone and extension from what I had seen in other venues. Yeah, I wonder if the the time constraints had something to do with how they – just decided to do the set list. Maybe it's less songs, but extend some of them more. You, thank I you. Think for t- that, I think I was gonna say true, they did I was just fourteen t- songs total. Gotcha. I was just gonna say thank you for sending me the set list to the best yeah. of your your knowledge. I'm looking right now to see if anyone has posted an official one in any of the groups, or it may be the band posted on their Instagram or something like that. But they opened with with uh, anyhow, which is very cool. Who did the? Uh, do you remember who did the final outro solo on that one? Did Susan take that one, or I thought I don't remember. Um, Sue did a lot on that song, and I don't know whether it was Sue or Derek that finished it off. I don't remember. It was a while ago tonight. <laughs> I so, know it's all kind of it's all kind of a yeah. A it's blur. really hard after concerts to draw memories unless I write stuff down. And I yeah, I got you. So I just know that they played it out and it sounded great. Um, and it, it seems to me like the, that song and Here My Dear have been the two that they've opened shows with the most in this Wheels of Soul run. It generally, it seems to be one or the other, though I know there's some shows where they had other things. Um, but it, was, it got it off to a good start and then it got you know, rolling from there. Made up mine. Yeah. Um, another long solo effort in there. Uh, played out long and really well done. Um, I just love the Wheels of Soul stuff that I've seen, whether it be the Nugs stuff, the videos, C-Mac that I want to in this show, is that they're playing out these songs a lot. And they don't seem to want to force it to be constrained time-wise. They're letting it go and playing. And they seem fearless and happy. And there's a lot of soloing from all over the band, you know. Uh, And and I liked it a lot. I mean, I'm just echoing what I think some of the fan page um, takes are. But it seems energized. It really does seem like a high energy show every time. And you feel like they're really into it and really enjoying it, which is great. I mean, not that they didn't before. I don't mean to imply that. 
I don't know how to describe it other than it, than it seems energized, but their shows are always energized. It just it just seems a little different in the soloing to me that it's more extensive. Like um, in the encore tonight, um, Ephraim had a long intro to uh, "Wish I Was Free," uh, it, one, a long trumpet solo, which was great. Um, uh, in the past, I've seen um, Alicia have long solos. Tonight, Mark had some extended play. Uh, Gabe had a little bit. <clears throat> so the the fact that they're giving band members, all band members, a chance to really stretch, I think is really nice. I like it. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was listening to a version of uh, Fall In that they did live. I honestly don't even remember which show it was from, something something <laughs> recent. And it sounded like they were extending it, kept going yeah. and going. And there, I'm like, no way that is this, you know, this is way longer than on the record. Yeah. But I wonder when they're doing it live because it sounded so like perfect still, even at it that was- extended length where it's like, okay, e- we're, each of these measures have been like figured out in advance. But I don't know if that is necessarily how it is. Maybe they're out there and they're like, oh, we'll go somewhere between here and here. We'll fill it out. But it just felt like right. perfect the way they did. That it kept going, you know, with fall in with all the harmonizing and the stuff Derek's doing yes. and the bringing it down low. And Derek and, really and, was and, into that one tonight. Too. And then Gabe making these magical sounds that come in here and there, like throughout the. the you wouldn't know it was the uh, same song that they played when they premiered it with the videos, because there's extensions built into it all over the place. And yet it keeps the continuity of what you associate with that song as you first hear it. They get back to it and they don't deviate so much from it that you're not, you, you don't lose it. You're, you're, you're describing the, the you're describing the band in itself. It's like you're, it's yes. like you're, you're hearing what's on the record, but you, but they're filling in certain gaps or like articulate or like they're, they're building the same thing, but the, the, the part it's like a different combination of parts yes. that equal the same right. thing and they're building something like bigger and possibly <laughs> possibly newer in a way like obviously they will give different solos to different instruments and and vocals and things on on songs well they seem amenable to doing that with every song it doesn't seem like there's constraints on we got to get so many songs in as it is we want to play these songs and play them hard you know, and play them out. And it's terrific. I mean, it really is terrific. Yeah. For Musicianship sure. is unbelievable as, as always. Yeah. It was fa- I'm guessing fall in tonight was probably similar to what I was t- describing. And Mike is always, you know, then they went right from that into I am the moon. Um, and that was great too. You know, it's an intense song when they get towards the end of it, it builds to intensity and Derek had the ability to make that intensity pop some with his with his solo and it's so complimentary to the to the you know the tone of the thing it's just incredible i mean i i enjoyed both of those i enjoyed i enjoyed everything pretty much that they played tonight there was nothing that i said geez i, I didn't like that so much yeah no i get what you're you're saying about complimentary and again just like hearing back some of the i am the moon live versions that have been coming out and i guess particularly the one that was on nugs the one that i saw just listening to what Derek's doing on that slide solo and watching it as well as just like otherworldly face melting all of those yeah uh, yeah I mean, and again complimentary is like the big thing it's never like too much it's never out of place there's such a melody to it. Obviously, the vocal qualities are things that I think I've mentioned in every single episode, it seems like, of this podcast, that style that we're all like so drawn to. And then Circle Around the Sun, same thing. They really played that out, and it morphed almost without stop into Pasaquan. Yeah, that was uh, later in the in the set list. And that I was like, later in the set. I like the I like that, set. how they're breaking the album into almost like sections of the album in a way. That's, I like it too because I think it fits better with the overall. I mean, the songs in Crescent have a certain mood to them. There's there's a not somberness, but there's a moodiness to a lot of the work 
And I think when you separate it off with other types of songs, it, it's better for the audience uh, who has a chance to to live different emotions through the other different songs. You know what I mean? I don't know if that made any sense, but the reality is I like them spread out throughout the, the set list. It, it, it adds a lot for me that way. And they do play them out. I mean, they really do play them out. I think that's part of the energy that's that's that they've sort of, I don't want to say rediscovered or like, you know, there's no limit on how much like positive energy, good vibes. It's not like, okay, you have too much good vibes on yeah, stage. Right. You've achieved right. too high of a musical level. Like it's not, that's not like how life or art works. So just keep going and trying to like do the best you can and enjoy, I guess, making the music as, as much as you can. But I think, a lot of it maybe must it must stem from like having new material and just being excited to like play I it think, out there or I just play that, it in I mean, general. I, I mean, my theory, and I don't know anything, I don't know any of these people, and I'm just guessing, is that the experience we had through, um, you know, the pandemic, uh, where they were apart for a long time and then they all were able to get back together, uh, I think that helps. And the fact that all of them contributed to making this album uh, brings everybody into it emotionally. And there, there's a teamwork to that, to the whole thing, to the coming together during COVID to put this together, to how they play, to living together, to arranging it. It's a team effort. So I think there's a buy-in when you get to these shows. And, yeah. And, and, and I think I think it's reflected in how they're playing. Personally, that's just right. me, though. Yeah, no, I I agree, and it seems that seems to be the the case. I was just wondering, and I probably shouldn't know this, or I could could look it up. I think, but I I, I know on Crescent for sure, all the songs were written by Tedeschi Trucks band members, right? Like, like own exclusively. So I wonder if the whole album, because obviously TTB is written with different songwriters and worked with different artists in the studio and and the writing process yeah. over the years on different uh, you know albums. But maybe this one is different in the sense that like just from the way that Derek has described it in some interviews and and how the and then the trailers and stuff, it seems like it's just like everybody just brought songs and brought ideas right. and and they so, sort of things out from there. And it sounds like it's like only TTB. Uh, well, uh, your interview with Bobby Tease, I thought, was tremendous. Oh, I appreciate that. I, I really, really enjoyed that. And he gave you some clues as to what that process was right. like. And well, how he thinks the current iteration of this band is really together, you know. And, and I think it reflects in how they're playing. I just think it's terrific. Um, and and it's, it's not like the other wasn't terrific. There's just something a little different to it. From my perspective and others i know on the on the messages that i see on and some of the fan posts um for those things i think the, they're just constantly evolving and obviously yeah. new members and new blood and new songs can 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 uh, you know change the experience for fans but i think it's just more the evolution of the band and that stems from derek and susan of course and yes. uh, and derek you know especially as the as the band leader, just keeping the, you know, he the does shit a great job. Creative. He does a tremendous job of keeping things on the tracks at these shows. Um, but you got young players with Isaac uh, and with Brandon that have stepped in. Uh, it's and I think they provide some extra energy too because they haven't been on the road for eight years or ten years with these guys, and they're getting you know, substantial roles and lots of stuff to do. So, you know, I, I've been, I, I've been sort of surprised at how this wheels of soul was different than I had anticipated it being, but the, you know, I look forward to the new music. I really wanted the new music and yet all the old songs they're playing are played out with a different style to them. And I'm thrilled with them, you know? Yeah. No, it's, I'm sure it's been fun fun for fans so far to get out there. Uh, shame, we had a shame and then a midnight in Harlem, if you want to tell me about. Uh, yeah, shame was blistering, just blistering. Um, Derek was played shame in an incredibly angry fashion. That's an angry song to begin with. 
and there was a lot of emotion in his playing and then uh and sue singing as there always is and they always take it out to pretty far out levels with it but tonight i thought derek really um uh, had an had an intensity to his play in that long solo after sue's uh singing you know um midnight sounded like midnight it didn't they didn't do anything that an intro that was a lot of horn no uh, no of, intro or did they uh, do no they had an intro cabby did a, a long intro mm -hmm. um and a few more of the horns were in on the intro and then it was standard midnight after that you know but show stopping when you say standard you mean show stopping and everyone is like yeah i mean fully fans, engaged a, a lot of their fans really want that every time they see them for me i've been to enough now where if they want to play other stuff i'm okay with it but it always is warmly received genuinely looked forward to always played out really well i mean you, you kind of know what you're getting when they play harlem it's it's iconic for them, and so they don't change it much, which is fine, you know. It's their signature it, signature song. The only absolutely. thing that the only thing that like changes, I suppose, is you know, of course, is like I guess some of the so solos and intros, but like how you know yes. Derek's no no two Derek outro solos are the same. Right. But but the way Susan delivers, but it, on that song with her vocal, like you said, they don't make she doesn't make too many changes from different versions over the years. No. But just like it's so iconic like you say hearing her sing certain lyrics and certain parts of the song and even her last note you know when she sings the words midnight in harlem right you know as that outro before Derek comes in is always such a powerful it moment is. and never mailed in and everyone never. at that venue knows they know that they're witnessing like something super special and even the fan like you and me who are like not going to cry if Midnight in Harlem is not in a set list, but then you get to the song, you get to that moment, and you're like... I'm happy with it. They, <laughs> when they yeah. play, I'm happy whenever they play it. I love it. Um, and, and I guess if I was going for the first time and I heard it and I thought that was their signature song and I didn't hear them play it, I would be disappointed. So I know they don't want to disappoint people. I'm sure they don't want to play it every single time they play, but I don't think they want to disappoint people either. Blake, um, I was going to say they get, you know what? I mean, we're fine with, you know, a lot of different songs in the set list, pretty much anything. But I guess that that they can, can not convert, but you can, that's a song that can get you like new fans, like hardcore yes. serious fans. And I, people have told me that story of watching Eric Clapton's Crossroads and yes. hearing Midnight in Harlem. Like, so that's where, like, who is this band? What people getting off their couches, still yeah. paying attention. Down, yeah. you know, looking up the band on YouTube after that, that song, and and I think any day they did, you know, the yes. Derek and the Dominoes cover on the I, cross. I love any but, day, and but I Midnight always, in Harlem especially is this yes. type of song. So it's like, so in a venue of like you're saying uh, of, uh, you know, five thousand, six thousand people with, with only you know maybe a fifth of them being hardcore fans, the other four thousand hearing Midnight in Harlem for the first time is could be like a kind of life changing and yeah, in some yeah. ways. I wonder if uh, Derek and Susan or Derek's, you know, angry playing on shame had something to do with the, uh, the venue and the issues, not letting fans in for Gabe. He was like getting mad at that. So you, I, I mean, that's actually, that's a good question. Like, do you ever take out, like, I'm I sure you yeah. transfer emotions through, through music. That's like what this is, but like very specific things that are yeah, bothering right. you that day that have nothing to do with music that you can let out your anger about through me, through an instrument. Shame was the fifth song in and, and I would think he might have already have vented by then if he was if he was feeling it. But he seemed pretty happy even with Los yeah. Lobos because he was up with Los Lobos for a couple of songs. And I don't think things like that bother these guys because um, they're professional. I just think sure. it's unfortunate uh, that the venue doesn't use common sense in terms of how they open their gates and timing of them. And that's just me uh, bitching. I don't know what constraints they have, you know. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what what it's like to run a venue like that. So I don't want to be too hard on him, but I do think Gabe got the short end of the stick with that. But yeah. I do want to tell you the song I liked the best tonight. Um, song my wife and I both liked the best tonight was that did it. Susan just crushed that song. She crushed it. If you've got any chance to get uh, video or audio from tonight. 
Uh, it was the right before the encore, I guess. Right before the encore, and it was tremendous. She her playing was was just fantastic, as was her singing. She does such great work all the time. But those old blues tunes, uh, "The Sky Is Crying" and "Pity the Fool," and that did it. She she just she just kills those things. And the crowd yeah. was really with her by the end of her playing on that because she was tremendous. Yeah, I was talking about this the, <laughs> the other day, like talking about a live version of this, how like even her vocal and her guitar have to like match the emotion of one another and always do and always deliver when she does these songs. And a, a Susan Blues song, I'd have to look at every single set list. But it's basically an, an essential for every single TTP yes. show. Even yeah. like, a, 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 I guess, especially a slow blues. I don't know if you'd call that. I guess you'd call that typically yeah. a slow yeah. blues. Or like a Just Won't Burn kind of, yeah. kind of thing is, 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 is like a show-stopping type moment. I, I use that phrase. Oh, I overuse the phrase show-stopping. But like that's the, the, the feeling. I'm going to have to pull up the, the thesaurus to look up synonyms for, for show-stopping. Well, it just that it's... Uh, it showcases Susan in such a great way because it gives you both her playing and the passion of her singing because they're passionate songs and she sings them with passion. I mean, it's tremendous. Uh, I'm glad they feature at least one of them a show because, you know, you could give me a couple and I'd be happy. Uh, and people get to see if they're not diehard TTB fans and you want to see a performer perform Susan on those songs is just unbelievably good. Right. It's like, uh, again, like I was saying, like that's the type of song where it's like you can't, not that TTV would ever mail anything, but you can't mail it in on never on that did it. And, and, and I don't know, like maybe there's got to be some nights where she's like tired or doesn't feel like doing this particular song. But, but, but really that is like, I mean, she shines throughout all these songs, I'm sure, on her various parts. But obviously that's a big, Showcase. Solo, a showcase moment yeah for sure it's a showcase so, so of course she wants so wants to to deliver and and it's amazing to always see that every time i and i always look for right leg lifts when her right leg goes up i know she's into it and it's really rolling uh and yeah. the, the she starts you know emphasizing emotion with the whole of her body and not just with her voice it's tremendous yeah, if we get a leg lift from Susan and a smile from Derek, there you leg go. lifts, leg lifts, and smiles is what we're 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 looking for to see if not. But yeah, no, yeah. there's there's a lot of passion and that comes out in different ways from this band for sure that we can see and especially here, of course. Anyway, that that to me and for my wife as well was we thought a highlight tonight. All the set was tremendous, but the energy for that one was really off the wall. Yeah. What about um, why does love got to be so sad? Terrific. Just terrific. Uh, Derek was born to play those songs. Uh, you know, why does love got to be so sad and outside women blues? I mean, they're killer songs. They're things that Derek plays, in my opinion, better than the person that did it originally. And he was just, he was made for those things. They're, they're tremendous every time. Um, that album was also a really good album that COVID sort of denied them a chance to, to really tour with, you know? Oh, just the, 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 uh, the Layla yeah. album itself. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, I don't even know that they would want to necessarily just, just exclusively or, you know, primarily play all those. They're still working them into their set list, but, but They've yeah, always, I mean, Derek's had songs from that in his set list since what 2002 or something. Basically, yeah, yeah. So it's not like they don't play them. Mm -hmm. uh, just it, it, it's an. It seems as though, given the theme of the new album, and I did read the poem, so I could try to better understand what I'm listening to when lyrically, when I'm listening to Crescent and Ascension. Um, it seems like it's a nice contrast to play some of the stuff off of Layla before you get the answering stuff from, from the new albums. Yeah. It's you know? all connected. There's, it's, yeah. there's so much levels to this where like, 
I'm not even like thinking like I, we're aware of the 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 Layla connection to the new songs. We're aware of Derek's name and history to Clapton and all my right. brothers and all this. And Susan being born on the day that Derek and the Domino's out, like all these crazy connections. Like I almost forget like all those, all that context, even just as we're going through the set list, I'm just like, Oh, why does love got to be so sad? That probably sounded awesome. Like that's kind of like what I'm thinking about, but there's, there is this like history and they, and I'm sure Derek really does love playing these these songs especially that one which i think they've been playing yeah quite a, quite a bit over the last uh, year or so and yeah you know, and it was it was really good um outside woman blues was really good too uh i like i said i have no complaints about anything i was really happy with it and it's hard it's like you know how do you uh, when people ask which is your favorite child the I band mean, asked that today the band posted they said what is your favorite song from from the first half of i'm the moon i'm like how you expect me to answer nah. that like the the one i'm currently listening to all of them are tied i almost did want to say um hold that line because i think that is going to be a special song for a lot of people and and that song is going to get a lot of people through a lot of tough times in their lives i think just yeah it's yeah, just, and they haven't played that, I don't think, yet. I, mean, I don't think they've played it. Yeah, I don't think they have. They're holding on to that one, maybe. I don't know, but I, 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 I think that, it's coming. I saw that uh, survey and decided not to take it because it's like, what mood am I in? You know, what day <laughs> is that, what, you, That's what you comment. It's just, it's just a, a funny, a fun thing for the band to get. Yeah, you know, it's some like, engagement. you know, they, they hit almost every mood. And whenever I listen to headphones on, I hear new things in there. I hear things break out that I didn't hear mm -hmm. before and there's more context to it. And I finished the poem and that helped with the context of some of it. Like I am the moon. I don't think you can write a better song for that poem. It, it's tremendous. It's a, it's a tremendous piece of writing. Um, it might not be everyone's completely favorite song, but I love it for how it fits the work that they were that they were trying to draw off of, you know, and they do a good job with it in concert too. You know what I keep coming back to, like how you were describing, um, you know, saying it's 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 you that they sound just as good, if not better, than some of the original musicians who who they they cover with their with their songs, songs they cover. But like I keep coming back to how like. You know, the Allman Brothers were pretty, I guess, were a pretty, pretty legendary band, like, right yes. away, shortly after they came out, as were, you know, like, bands like Led Zeppelin or, or whoever right. the, the case may be. But, and, you know, some of the the legend, those legends have grown, like Jimi Hendrix, even, you know, he was a legend right away, but, you know, like, over the years, and, you know, those legends grow. Like, we don't have to wait to call Susan and Derek legends. Like, they no. are, they, I, like, I, I hope that they know that, like, they are i mean this is not what they why they're doing they perform music to be called legends as i put up no, air quotes they, they but, just, but they but they are and and i get those same feelings listening to ttb do pasaquan as listening to the allman brothers yes. do mountain jam or or when susan sings um you know an allman brothers cover it's like to me it's like just as powerful when she's sings whipping post it's just as haunting and gives gives me the chills like and it, and the same could go to i'm not just saying when they cover like bands like the allman brothers or or <clears throat> top bands from the 60s and 70s or whatever like that with their original songs and especially when they take their original songs out on the road like it's like right on par to me with anything that like those legends like clapton and hendrix and zeppelin and i, I and, agree that on live i mean i've seen a lot of bands because i'm old and i go back into the 60s and 70s and the thing i love about this band is the integrity i mean there's a musical integrity to what they're doing they're not trying to show off and copy a template they're trying to add something to the music and be true to what it is that they originally heard and put an embellishment on it that fits this band you know and yet plays homage sort of to the, what they started with you know, who they came from and so, and they don't do it by calling attention to themselves. They do it by playing as a band. It's, it's, it's a great thing. You don't see that a lot anymore. 
Yeah, no, they're they're great, and we to to just to kind of continue with the with the set list because I know it's getting late on on uh, by you, and I appreciate your time and and the sure. recap and all this. But we did have a here, my dear, that was flanked uh, by the Why Does Love Got to Be So Sad and the Outside Woman Blues. That was the eighth song, and right. then and then La Di Da. So we did get a crescent, another crescent song, and uh, Susan I mean, you know, said La Di Da was designed to be like a uh, a Scotch drinking song. And that's how said, i you, described it the other yeah. day yeah she said if uh if you want to sing with us on the choruses go for it so you know she's telling you where it came from sound like she may have been the primary author of that one i'm not sure you have to look that i'll look that up yeah that's but a great one good. yeah it's got a real soul 70s vibe but yeah. that bard vibe a little dylan vibe to it and rolling stones and you know some no, soul that, to it yeah, no, along. I, I like it. And again, they embellished it tonight with different flourishes from what's on the record. And it didn't sound exactly the same as what you hear when you're listening to Ascension. I, I'm looking forward to hearing more of Ascension and then working it in. I don't know when that's going to take place in this grouping, whether it's going to all come together towards the end of the month when they hit Red Rocks or whether we're going to be deep into the fall tour before we start catching set lists that are going to encompass more and more of, of that album. You know, the beacon, I, I'm going to the last three nights of the beacon and it's my fondest hope that they play a good chunk of it. Those yeah, I'm sure nights. we'll hear a lot of, we'll hear it all, <laughs> you know, for the, for the most part, I can, you know, at, at those beacon shows, I'm sure they'll hit most of the, of the new material i would i would think um yeah i think so too they're there for long enough that they have a whole lot of different days to play it and different ways to play on those days so it, it'll be interesting um yeah, I, I can't wait i'm going to the final five are you well, well oh to, man let's say hello when we're there oh well, for sure some people are going to the fin it. the final seven the first yeah. seven and the final seven all of them my final my budget for seven times like a 10 day period in New York city just doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, so I got Thursday, Friday, Saturday of the last week. I'm excited for that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it's going to be, it's going to be quite, quite something as are the shows for the rest of the summer. Um, I think we did kind of cover all the set lists. We jumped around a little bit, Lottie died yeah. and told me about circle and, and Pasacon, and that did it. And the encore, I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. Is there anything else you want to mention about those songs or the show? Only, only Ephraim's intro to I Wish I Knew. Uh, it was extended, and it was really good. And it was the first time for me hearing him do that. Now, I'm sure others, maybe he's done it, I don't know how many times, and I'm just not tuned in to what I've missed. But... For me, in person anyway, that was the first time I've seen a long Ephraim solo, and I liked it. I thought it was really good. Yeah, no, they're they're all they're all great. Um, again, I appreciate your time. I know I only want to no look at what time it is on the uh, okay. <laughs> East Coast after midnight, getting closer towards uh, one a.m. I'm glad you had a good time. I'm glad the show was awesome. It was fun. What's the next show that you're going to? You got one on this on schedule? Nothing right else now? for Wheels of Soul. Um, I'm off now. Things can obviously change, but the way it looks now, and you really do have to buy tickets early or pay a price for it if you're going to uh, not do it early. I don't think any more wheels are sold, but the three nights at the Beacon in October for TTB. I've got some other shows with other groups throughout the summer, um, but no more TTB. I'm, I, I'm really hoping they work on Nugs or something like that and from red rocks or someplace where i can buy it again uh, i'd be thrilled just give us like a subscription to like the whole um, yes to every would, single show take yeah. all our money i, I don't know <laughs> what the, i don't know the i don't know the, the economics announce, yeah. of it from right. anybody's end and so i don't want to pass judgment on anybody sure. doing anything but it would be wonderful for me as a fan because there'd be a lot of shows that i'd be doing but when they do offer them up, it's really, it's like, okay, now I've got a date certain. Now I know what I'm doing this night uh, and that night. You know what I mean? It's that I like. 
Right. Yeah, I'm getting a little crazy where I'm trying to recap. I'm going to try to do more of what I'm doing right now, talking to you and talking to fans, the boots on the ground. Like, I guess it doesn't have to be as soon as the show ends or that night per se, but there is something special about like feeling some of that energy. And I kind of feel that from Definitely. you, like, like that you, you were just there, like w- watching and listening to yes. Derek and Susan and the band like an hour ago. And yeah. I'm and I'm just trying to suck up a little bit of that positive energy and experience that you had, and I guess in turn share that with whoever might be listening yeah. to this podcast out there. There's no and question. That, there's a there's a high to coming off of their shows, and you wish you could do it again the next night because it's such a positive experience. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody that's on the uh, on the uh, you know edge of whether they want to go or don't go, go. These these shows, these Wheels of Soul shows, universally from the people that go to a lot of shows, they feel the same thing. That this is a a really really good iteration of the band, and well worth your time to go. Yeah, yeah. medicine for the soul. Yeah, yeah, and the way they're playing is tremendous. And you know, if you're on the fence, go do it. Would be my oh. suggestion. Oh, for sure. Anything else you want to mention or any, or even plug or promote? I don't know if nah. you're a public figure per se. I'll just thank you for your time. I'm just a uh, retired old geezer, Adam. That's all I am. <laughs> that's that's not a bad thing to be. There's worse things to be in this world. Yeah, but there th- are. Yeah, but thank you again. I appreciate your time, and we'll uh, we'll talk more soon. Thanks, Adam. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, and good luck with the rest of everything. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Talk more soon. Later, Have fun Joe. in Atlanta. I shall. Thanks again. So there you go. That was episode 81 with Joe Torriello recapping uh, Lewiston, New York art park, the TTB show tonight. That was a lot of fun. I did enjoy this. I, I'm probably going to, I'm going to make a Google calendar maybe and put every single TTB show on it. I could even maybe share that with people. I'm thinking out loud right now a little bit. But I do want to continue to recap the shows. I'll see what I can do from Atlanta. I might have to use my phone and do a little bit of a crude setup recapping those. But I'll try to get the audio of this one out there uh, soon enough for you guys. Maybe tonight or I can do it tomorrow. I'll have a, a basic laptop with me on on the road uh, or you know, while I travel. But uh, thanks again to Joe. Um, I'm going to look out for uh, any fan videos or fan audio of uh of this uh of this show that he described for us tonight but if uh but uh, yeah i just want to say i hope everyone is doing okay out there please check out of course tedeschi trucks podcast on instagram that's at tedeschi trucks podcast um it's tedeschi trucks podcast on youtube you're there already if you're watching right now please subscribe on youtube you can see where the subscribe button is it's in the lower right uh of the uh right below the video uh, please like the videos as well. Feel free to share them. That's always helpful. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Adam Choit. And uh, please be sure to subscribe, of course, uh, via whichever way on uh, whatever platform you listen to podcasts on, I'm meaning to say. Um, we're breezing through here. We're, we're, it's, it's getting late here on the West, the West Coast as well. But again, thank you, everyone. I appreciate the, the lurkers, the listeners, the viewers. Um, looking forward to the summer of more music and, and the rest of, uh, the rest of I am the moon. So, uh, t- uh again, oh, Tedeschi trucks band is at, uh, Tedeschi trucks band.com buy merch, buy tickets, buy albums, uh, join the fan club. Um, I think that's about all I got for today. Thank you again, everyone. And, uh, let's, uh, talk more soon. Peace. Peace.